Hi there, hope you're well. In the workshop this week, I'm making some simple plywood storage boxes. Now, fairly obviously, this is a continuation of the workshop makeover from last week, where I fitted my cabinets and open shelves. And these boxes are going to fit into those cabinets. Now, they're just workshop storage boxes, so I'm not going to be fanatical about the fit or the finish. But whenever I make something like this, where it's got to fit into a specific space, I like to make up a full-size template of the shape like this one, just to be sure that it fits OK in the space, which is what I've done here, like an oversized rod or story stick, just to be sure that it moves easily and it doesn't jam or snag. And once I've done that, then I can plan out how they're actually going to be made. So if you caught part one of the Cabinetry basic series, and if you didn't, you might want to go and take a look at that. You know that I was talking about in a, in a hung cabinet, a cabinet that goes on the wall, the top and the bottom should sit within the side so that the fixing goes through. And it's immensely strong, much stronger than the axial load on a fixing. With the draw, it's kind of the same thing because the forces are pulling back and forth. So the front and the back should sit within the sides and the same with the base uh, that should also sit within the sides obviously there's some downward force on the base as well but most of the time with a base like this where it's just flush it's sitting on something so it's either on the on the runners in the cabinet or it's on the floor like this so it's really very strong the downside of that of course is that you do get to see this uh, end grain if you like now in birch ply that's not an attractive but i still would prefer to have a nice flush front to that one way of getting around that of course is to do what ikea do and their little sort of birch ply boxes and that's to use a finger joint on the edge that looks better, I think, but I still prefer to have a nice flush front. So what we're going to do, or at least what I'm going to do on these boxes, is to replace that 12mm front with an 18mm front. Apologies, this is MDF, not birch ply, because you've seen the price of birch ply. I'm not going to waste it. Uh, and what I do is I rebate around three sides, and that then sits in flush like that. I can fix in through the sides here and that keeps the whole thing together nice and tight and that sits really well, really flush and presents a nice front for these cabinets. These are workshop cabinets, we don't need to go overboard on these but I still like them to look quite nice when they're in the background when I'm doing my talking heads. So I've got my uh, mock-up, that's all looking fine, I've got my cut list, we just need to get on get all the parts cut out and then we can crack on get these nailed together. Now I'm going to be using 12mm birch ply for the box sides and base. Uh, I'd like to use something cheaper to be honest, but it's all I've got right now. And I'll start by ripping it into strips, then cross-cutting it to length. and then make a start cutting the draw fronts from 18mm birch. With all the parts cut, I can start putting the boxes together, and I'm keeping the construction super simple with glue and nails. So while the glue dries on the boxes, I've cut the first set of drawer fronts and made the handle cutouts, which I'm pretty pleased with actually, they're looking pretty good. I'll go through the details of how to do that in just a bit. But I've left the front slightly wide because when the cabinets went in, they've twisted slightly and pulled out a square. The walls are far from perfect and it's just one of those things. There's not a huge amount you can do about it, but one thing you can do is to just trim the drawer fronts back slightly, so at a slight angle, so that they fit in even if then we know they're not square, they actually fit parallel to the cabinet. Uh, and as I was cutting the fronts from a single sheet of birch ply, it's easy to let the grain run all the way through the drawer fronts as well. So that's all pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how these have worked out. Oops. 
I'm going to get on with the next set and then we'll see about cutting the rebates and getting the boxes made up. I made a template for the handle cut out with a hole saw, marked up the draw fronts, cut the shape out roughly on the bandsaw, to be honest a jigsaw probably would have done a better job, and then flush trimmed these against the jig with a palm router, cleaning up the edges afterwards with a bit of sandpaper. To make the rebates I'm using my plunge saw and a simple stop block to cut around three sides of the draw front. Then simply chiselling away most of the waste using the plywood layers as a guide. I know, I know, it looks really crude, but it is very effective at taking away the bulk of the waste. Then I can make the finished cut in a single pass quickly and easily on the router bench. The glue up is very straightforward, plenty of glue in the rebate, snug it all together, then pin it through the sides and base into the 18mm front. After a suitable time we can get everything sanded and I'm just finishing off the edges by hand. So that's all looking pretty good, they've all been sanded to P320. I'm often asked about finishes for birch ply and for commercial work, uh, if I was doing this for clients, I'd often go to a P2000 on this stuff, Abrolon. Uh, it's a foam backed abrasive and that comes up just super silky smooth and then I'd finish it with a water based clear lacquer like this flooring finish. This is Junker Strong. Uh, again, quick drying, water-based, hard wearing, all the all the things you want in a finish really. For these, just because it's you know it's just workshop stuff, P320 is absolutely fine. I'm just going to finish these with uh, regular beeswax. Uh, while the dust settles a little bit on the drawers, I'm just going to put a, a little bit on the edges of the runners back there and then I'll move on to these and then we can uh, start fitting them and fingers crossed hopefully they'll fit. Yeah that's the camera that's wobbling a bit by the way not the cabinets. So onto the boxes and a nice layer of beeswax applied to the face and edges with a stuffed cloth. Again these are just workshop stories so I'm not at all precious about them but feel free to apply many layers of wax to your own if you choose. A couple of hours later and the beeswax can be buffed up with the dry cloth, all ready for fitting. So I'll leave it there I think for this one. There are many ways obviously to make plywood workshop storage boxes, but these work well for me and Maybe they'll work well for you too. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. And as always, thanks so much to my Patreon pals and my YouTube members for their amazing support. As I said in the previous video, this is just the first step along a long sort of workshop makeover road, which will be featuring in many more future videos. But that's it for this week. Uh, thanks again for watching. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. Yes, just in case you were wondering why the audio in that particular segment was so bad, well it was because I managed to record an entire afternoon's worth of, of video without sound. Uh, most of it I managed to salvage, uh, some of it I could redo, 
but one of the disadvantages of ad-libbing as we are now instead of having a script that you follow is that you don't know exactly what you say so rather than sit and transcribe a couple of minutes worth of video so that I could then write myself a script fortunately more by luck than judgment I had an overhead camera that was running all through that segment so I managed to pull the audio off that from the onboard microphones that weren't pointing at me and massaged it to make it sort of acceptable uh, not up to my usual standards I know but there we are it was much much easier to do that than it was to try and reshoot the whole thing anyway just thought I'd let you know what was going on with that segment and just while my uh, member credits my Patreon supporters my YouTube members uh, get a get a name check at the end of every video and while those credits roll I just wanted to take the opportunity to say that my clamping guides are now back in stock in my Etsy store I had a, a set of these made up and I did the branding for them just before Christmas and they sold out very very quickly I know there are a number of people who are disappointed not to get a pair of these so these are now back in my Etsy head on over there there's a link in the video description if you're interested in a set of these thank you as always for watching I'll see you next time